<clears throat> All right, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Caddy. I am with Austrek, and today we have Trace Wilson, who is the Dean of Law, and Courtney uh, Pippa, am I right? Yeah, keep up. Yeah. Is, that's right, okay. Um, who is the la um, in her last year of law school at Griffith University, and she was the mooting, um, mooting competitor at their law school as well, which she'll talk about in a second. So I'll hand it over to you guys. Thanks so much, Caddy. So I'm um, very pleased to be able to uh, talk to you all today and um, with my uh, colleague here, student Courtney Pieper, who was able to join us in Australia this year, which we were delighted about um, on her husband's work visa. But we're also delighted that a whole lot of Canadian law students will be joining us next year because finally the borders are going to be open. Uh, but we're going to talk to you in the brief time that we have today about mooting. Uh, what mooting is and what you can learn from it and why you should think about doing it when you come to law school. So one of the great pleasures of my career uh, as an academic has been coaching moot teams. And one of the moot teams I coached this year was uh, in an international investor state arbitration moot, which Courtney might tell you a bit about. Courtney participated in it this year. And of all of the many, many students from around the world competing in this competition, she was announced one of the top 10 mooters um, as an individual oralist. So I guess, um, Courtney, hi, do you want to tell everyone a little bit about yourself and maybe why you decided to uh, participate in the moot competition to start with? Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me, Therese. Um, the moot competition was really exciting, very nerve wracking at the same time. I initially decided to compete after going to many seminars like this one and hearing other students and other coaches talk about how much their mooting experience has meant to them in their careers and in their law school experience. And I really wanted to try it out, but being in an accelerated degree, I was very nervous. I wouldn't have enough background to do that, but I took the leap uh, this year and went for it. And I learned that I actually developed a lot of those skills through the mooting process instead of bringing what I needed to the competition. Yeah, yeah. so it was a very good experience. And so for those who don't know, mooting is, is basically a mock hearing where law students get to act as legal counsel and uh, prepare, I put a lot of research and time into preparing a case, preparing an argument, and then presenting that argument either in a courtroom setting with judges or in this case it was in an arbitration setting with a, a tribunal of three arbitrators. Uh, so, so Courtney, can you talk a little bit about um, the competition itself and what was involved in, in being a part of the team? Yeah, so this being my first mooting competition and uh, I hadn't taken the contracts to class that Griffith offers as part of the mooting prep program. Uh, I was a, a mold of clay that it was really easy for me to just jump into it. But this uh, arbitration, because it was an arbitration, it wasn't in front of judges. You had to use different linguistics. And it took us about four months mm -hmm. by the time we got the case problem and read through it to develop our arguments. Um, it was uh, arbitration between a nation and a pharmaceutical company about the expropriation of a drug that could be used to help the country itself. So we had to prepare arguments for both sides because we weren't sure at which time during the competition we would be presenting which argument. So in our team of four, we had to, we decided to split up the arguments and then share them amongst ourselves. And the whole point of this competition is to really know your argument. Uh, it's really difficult to do if you don't know your arguments. Uh, we had to argue things such as on a virtual hearing, uh, is it accessible? Should it be allowed in certain situations? And my specific arguments were around expropriation and fair and equitable treatment. So I had to develop arguments both for the government, but also on behalf of the pharmaceutical company. And at the end of the day, I ended up being the respondent. So I represented the pharmaceutical company, which was very interesting. Yes, thanks, Courtney. And you, you mentioned you really have to be well prepared because, of course, you get asked a lot of questions by the, the arbitrators. So uh, can you talk a little bit about the strategies that you use and the skills you developed to, to make sure that you could, you know, take a deep breath and just answer all <laughs> those very tricky questions? 
Yeah. So this is what it comes in to be very different from school where you're prepping a presentation to give. And a lot of us, that's what we had prepared for our first judges seminar uh, with our coaches at Griffith. And we very quickly learned that we didn't have time to have a 15 minute presentation for a 20 minute slot time because five minutes for questions is not enough, especially when you have more than one adjudicator. So uh, my presentation uh, ended up being just jot notes on a piece of paper and I had to really know those arguments. Uh, For me, my biggest weakness was reading and not looking in the camera. And so I had to really focus on that for the competition. And it turned out to be about a total of six minutes of speaking time. And in the competition, I ended up hitting my 18 minute mark on the button. (laughs) And that's how many questions you get asked throughout that period. And as a respondent, you're going second. So you also want to show that you were listening to the opposing counsel and what the arguments they're saying. So I had to take notes and I switched my arguments around to match what they were saying. Fantastic. And so what skills do you think you've learned? I mean, obviously skills that will help you in being a lawyer, but but probably also transferable skills, even if you ended up doing something else with your career in the long term. I mean, I expect you to be a lawyer because you're brilliant at it, but (laughs) just just in terms of of what it can do for you in in developing um, important skills. Yeah, so especially with um, virtual mooting, Uh, you learn a whole different set of etiquette on your electronics because in moot competitions, as soon as the judge or the adjudicator starts speaking, you have to like stop talking right away, give them the floor. So when you're online with the leg that there usually is, it's very difficult to do that. So you really had to take your time. So I think um, the moot competition really showed me how to slow down my speaking but yet still speak concisely and to the point because you only have so much time to get your arguments by. Uh, It also taught me um, skills when listening to questions and to pinpoint out exactly what needs to be said. That's always a big thing in mooting when judges ask a question and you don't actually answer the question, just kind of go off on your own tangent. There's a, a middle ground into keeping in line with the arguments and keeping the judges on time, but also answering their questions. So I think I learned all those skills and I am doing a clerkship this year uh, with one of the firms here in Australia. So I hope I can use those skills. Fabulous. Actually, feedback we often get from law firms is that they really like the students who've done mooting for all of the reasons that you've just described, because of course, Part of it wasn't just the moot itself, but the written argument. So can you talk a little bit maybe about also your skills um, that that may have been honed in terms of um, persuasive writing, crafting a legal argument persuasively in writing and how you structure it? Um, Yeah, so that part took probably the longest. Our paper was about 8,000 words per argument. Uh, So very long and very difficult to work on when everyone's distanced. I was lucky enough by the end that I was in person in Australia and we could work together. But crafting those arguments for an international arbitration, you're utilizing a lot of research that's not normal for law school between Canadian courses and Australian courses. Uh, totally different sites that you're looking up. Um, the Griffith Library um, introduction course really helped because I knew where to look uh, to get those specific UN documents, um, international case law. And it's just reading through those case briefs and saying, okay, what's really going to apply here? Because not every pharmaceutical case is going to apply. And it's also with COVID and Um, talking about vaccines and certain things, you really have to be careful because you don't want to cloud your argument with politics, so to say. So you want to make sure that you keep that very brief and utilize each other on your team. It's, you know, at the start, we were very segregated and it made working on the paper very difficult. But as soon as we worked together and read through our arguments together, we actually had one evening on teams where we went through the entire case 
that's also important because you start like making up facts in your head on the case after reading it so many times and having it in your head for so long. So making sure you really reread the case brief helps, helps you make those arguments concise. And we ended up cutting a lot and one section we completely reformed right before the deadline for the competition. And then for the, um, we had a month to prepare our oral arguments and we still, you know, took out some cases that we thought didn't apply and added others. And yeah, it really gets you down to what's important going from an 8,000 word paper to a six minute oral argument is a little crazy, but uh, it was very time consuming. Uh, It's definitely something I'm glad I did, but I think for my accelerated degree, doing one was enough, especially virtually. So you don't get the other good experiences of having the networking. I've been doing networking on LinkedIn, which just isn't the same. Yes, yeah, so we're hoping um, 2022 will have students actually, you know, participating in international moots in person and going to well, that yeah. Vietnam, wouldn't it? So that would have been oh, fun. Um, would have been really fun. I take a team to Vienna most years when we don't have COVID um, to participate in a moot as well. So, yeah, and then there are those wonderful face-to-face networking opportunities. Um, so you mentioned, you know, doing the accelerated degree, it's pretty full on um, and you mm-hmm. took it on as an extracurricular activity. Would you recommend that people, even though you're, you're really busy with your work and this was something extra to do, in hindsight, was it? worth it and is it something you'd recommend to people considering studying law yeah so I did the mood right in the middle of my degree so at the end of my first year going into my second year and it was perfect timing for me I didn't um, I hadn't taken contracts too which is the mooting prep course so uh, but I still found it was okay and there was another um, mooter that also hadn't taken it and we were confident and he was actually my case team partner, uh, which was exciting. Um, but uh, looking back, I probably could have done it in my second trimester or third trimester. Uh, it would have been really challenging, but uh, because I'm a postgraduate student, I think I could have honed those skills earlier. So definitely don't be afraid to jump into mooting. Uh, you get to meet a lot of different students from across the law school, just not Canadian students. And that also really helps because a lot of them are doing four or five year combined degrees. And so they have uh, different skills that they've learned as well. Fabulous. And yes, I have to say that every moot team I've ever coached, they've all become like best buddies and often people <laughs> with really nothing in common, you know, but they, they come together and you're working so intensively on a particular problem for such a long um, you do become friends. Is that that your experience with that Motley crew you worked with? Yes. Um, Matt and I are friends. He actually was an engineer in his first career. My husband's an engineer, so we've hung out quite a bit. And him and his wife are moving to Brisbane, so excited to hang out with them more. And this summer, I'm taking courses down in the Gold Coast. So the other two students that are um, doing an undergraduate degree program, LLV combined. Uh, they're located in the Gold Coast. So we're already booking lunch dates for the days that I'm down there for class. So it's really interesting getting to know different people. And it really helped me uh, be in Australia and learn the lay of the land with the university and what to expect and have study groups because Matt and I have courses together in the JD program as well. So it's really awesome. Fabulous. Any final sort of tips you'd give to anyone thinking about studying law in Australia from Canada or hopefully coming in person to Australia very soon? Yeah, uh, even if you start online, I did the first uh, few trimesters online and I really enjoyed it and developed a study cohort online and met some students. And now that I'm in person, uh, I am at the Nathan campus, so there's not as many international students there compared to Gold Coast, but uh, it's a beautiful campus. Got to see Koala first week, and uh, the professors are just also uh, excited to talk to everyone and train them in person. So, uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend studying law in Australia and honing in on your network. And you're currently um, in the beautiful Whit Sundays on holidays. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm hiding in the hotel lobby. Um, <laughs> 
it was our first vacation, first flight in Australia and so easy in and out of the airport in half an hour and just so surreal being on a plane and the wet Sundays are just so beautiful. Uh, we're going back to Brisbane tomorrow, but uh, it's been a lovely week just relaxing after final exams. Fantastic. Thanks so much um, for your time, Courtney. I think that concludes our session. Thanks so much Thank for, for, for organizing. Thank you so much. This. That was great. Thank you. Have a great time on your vacation. Thanks. And see you later, Teresa. See you, Katie. Bye. Bye.